What happens if you have love but no truth? What's the danger there? We talked about powers before, different types of power. Coercive power, for instance. There is power in love, but what defeats love? There's a power that can defeat love. Belief in a lie. Yeah. yeah. Selfishness. Selfishness directly cannot defeat love. But something can. In the Garden of Eden, what was it that, that defeated love in Eden? Deception. When you believe a lie, when you believe a lie about the, about the person that you're in a trust-love relationship with, and you believe that person is your enemy, you believe that person's out to get you, you believe that person is going to hurt you and injure you, then love is fractured and breaks down. Love and trust is broken when lies are believed. That's why we have to have the combined love and truth. Because when love and truth are combined, then lies have no power. Lies can't fracture. Lies can't undermine. And, well, and, and since we're coming from a position, unlike Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve came from a position where there were no lies operating in their head. We're coming from a position where we have a lot of lies operating in their head. Lies that we tell ourselves even. And so we need love and truth not only to be secure, but to heal, to restore. And so we have a message that is a message of love, but we have a message of how reality works. A message that can actually help a person see what's really wrong inside themselves. Because if the diagnosis is wrong, then the treatment is... Devastating. Usually wrong. And you know, this, uh, this past week, my brother ended up in the hospital um, with a swollen foot that was red. He had a history of osteomyelitis years ago. It's an infection of the bone. And you know, you're told that that can sometimes recur. And so he ends up in the hospital, terrible pain in his foot, red, swollen, um, and they're concerned. And they initially diagnosed that osteomyelitis had returned. So he'd been on, for other reasons, low-dose steroids. And so they took the steroids away because we have infection. Infection suppress, uh, uh, steroids suppress immune response, and so it can allow infection to grow stronger. So they took the steroids away, put him on antibiotics, and he got worse. And his felt swell rose. The pain got significantly worse. And so they, after a couple of days, they biopsied it, and he had crystals in it. God. And it ended up being gout instead, even though his blood levels were normal, so it was an unusual presentation, they immediately took away the antibiotics and gave him high-dose steroids, and within a few hours, everything started getting better. What's the point? If your diagnosis is wrong, then your treatment is usually wrong. Spiritually, the same thing. Much of Christianity is operating on a wrong diagnosis. We're in legal trouble. We have a legal problem. Rather than we have a condition of heart. We have a message that says God is our creator. He knows exactly what's broken in each one of us, and he has a solution that can fix it. We have to first come back, and we talk about the sheep that are lost, that don't know they're lost, or don't know their way out of the ditch they're in. This is like often addicts. They know something's wrong. They know something's, that something's broken. They don't know how to get a fix. And step one of the 12 steps, we have to be diagnosed first. We admit that we are powerless over our addiction and our lives are unmanageable. We have to accept our unmanageable and sick diagnosis. And, and step number two, we admit that a power higher than ourselves can restore us to sanity. We have, so, so the first two steps are for the sheep that are lost. And we have a message, yep, all humanity, and you can normalize this. This isn't just for addicts. All humanity, born in sin, conceived in iniquity. We have a condition of fear, insecurity, selfishness in our heart that we, we didn't choose, that we were born with. But there's a power who can heal and fix what's broken in us.